Hello, and welcome to the Kusu Candidate Briefing for this election window. Thank you for taking the time to view this briefing and start your election campaign from here. You'll need to complete the short quiz alongside this video to ensure you have all of the information that you need. So, through this session, we hope to get you up to speed, so you're ready to run a fantastic election campaign. Firstly, we'll be going through Kusu in general and how the election rolls tie into everything that we do, giving you more of an idea on the background of the union and how we work as well. We'll be looking at the rules of the election and how the voting system functions. It's very important that we have a fair and accessible election, ensuring that everyone can take part and have their say. Finally, we'll be going through some of the campaigning bits, highlighting some effective methods and tips that we've seen in the past and how you could maximise your campaign strategy. So, what do you know about KUSU? What do we offer? KUSU has many arms and offers a number of services to students. You may recognise some of the services listed on the screen. The most important part of all of these is that they are led by students. In fact, students are at the heart of everything we offer. We do this through student leadership and making sure that students are core in the decision-making process. So what exactly does student leadership look like and what on earth does student-led even mean? Well, to perhaps oversimplify it, it means that KUSU is run by students for students. We have a team of full and part-time student leaders who effectively make the biggest decisions at KUSU. They aren't the only ones either. Student leaders make decisions on everything at KUSU, from course-specific rep issues to university-wide items. Some of the full-time officers are even on the University Board of Governors. We have plenty of roles on offer, ranging from full-time paid positions to part-time voluntary roles. As you can see, there are student leaders absolutely everywhere, making changes for the betterment of student experience at KUSU. For specific information on the roles in this election, please check out the KUSU website or speak to your campus coordinator. Let's move on to some rules and regulations. This helps keep the elections fair and gives everyone a good chance to participate and succeed. All of the rules and regulations can be found online under Guide to Elections and will be sent to you as part of the Candidates Pack once you have completed the briefing quiz. You must read the rules and regulations before you begin your candidacy. This is a necessity before moving forward. Please do read these. It is much better to read them now and to be sure than skip through and be affected by a rule or regulation down the line. The elections process as a whole is overseen by the returning officer, which in our case is an NUS official. However, they need someone specific to the Students' Union to keep an eye on proceedings, so we have a deputy returning officer. Any election complaints are dealt with by the deputy returning officer. If you have any questions about any of the items in the next section, please contact the elections team at elections.su at coventry.ac.uk. You can find this and any other links you may need below the video. Manifestos or personal statements are what set you apart from the other candidates. Everyone must upload one as part of their candidacy. School reps are not required to do this, but we do encourage it. As much as it is a requirement, we're quite flexible with how these look. They could be one word or a thousand. Some candidates use a more poster style manifesto, while others opt to keep it simple. There are manifesto drop-in sessions available on each campus for you to attend. These sessions are not mandatory, but may help you with the layout and structure. All candidates, other than school reps of course, who don't submit a manifesto by the deadline will be removed from the election. This may sound harsh, but manifestos are so crucial in an election and ensure that voters are making informed decisions about the candidates they are choosing. Campaign posters are really useful items to help promote yourself. We'll touch on how to make a great poster a little bit later on, but we do have some rules for you first. All candidate posters must have a picture of you. This is so students will be easily able to put a name to a face when you're talking to them. Please make sure this photo is clear and easily recognisable. For example, group photos are not really appropriate. The poster must also contain details of voting week so students know how and when they can vote for you. A web link to the voting page must also be included for this reason. 
Finally, make sure that you put the Kusu logo on your poster. Basically because this makes it easy to see which posters are part of the elections and which are not. It's so important that you follow these guidelines um, for these posters so that we do not remove them without cause. We do not allow slates in our elections. This means that candidates cannot endorse other candidates, share marketing materials or pool resources. If you have any questions about this point, please email elections.su at coventry.ac.uk. Campaign teams are popular amongst candidates as they can help to win votes across campus and share the load. Campaign teams can be formed, but the members of these campaign teams must be declared before any campaigning begins. It's worth remembering that you as the candidate are responsible for the actions of your team. So if they break the rules, you will be the one whose candidacy is affected. Sabbatical officer, faculty officers and campus officers have an expenses limit of up to £20. Up to £10 of this can be reimbursed by KUSU. School education reps and campus welfare, education and activity officer candidates will have an expenses limit of £10, none of which can be reimbursed. Candidates must declare all items used for campaigning and must not spend more than their expenses limit. Candidates cannot financially support another and an expenses claim form is made available to all candidates through the KUSU elections team. It must be completed and sent back with receipts before voting opens. Already owned equipment, which is reasonable assumed to other candidates will have access to, or an equivalent of, is permitted without the deduction from expenses. Candidates should refer to the free and fair usage guide or speak to the KUSU elections team for information on what is permissible. Question time is an opportunity for students to ask you and your fellow candidates questions that set you apart from one another. However, not all roles will have a question time and it can be different for each role. All of the dates for KUSU question times can be found on the election section of the KUSU website. Some roles may have recording sessions in place of traditional husting style events. Please check with your campus coordinator or the elections team on what format your question time will be. If for any reason you're unable to attend your question time, please let us know as soon as possible via elections.su at coventry.ac.uk. So, campaigning is the best way of getting votes. You may begin campaigning from the manifestos being published. Voting will only be open between 8am and 8pm throughout the voting week. This is to make sure that candidates get some rest, have time to chill out, and of course complete university work. Be aware that students will be unable to vote outside of this window. Campaigning will not be allowed in any library building across the CU group as students will be busy there studying. It is also worth noting that there will be no campaign zones set up around each voting booth. These areas allow students to vote without the pressure of someone leaning over their shoulder. Finally, remember to be welcoming and polite through the campaigning process. We want students to reflect positively on this entire process. Be sure not to be seen as annoying or rude when you're out campaigning. Mobile devices present a unique problem in our elections, as every student can use one to vote with. A mobile device can instantly become a voting booth. As such, we have additional guidance in place around their usage. If you or a member of your campaign team are speaking to a student and asking them to vote on a mobile device, you must step back as soon as they begin to use the device. Additionally, you cannot position yourself so the screen is visible. This ensures that the student can then vote for whoever they choose without risk of you intimidating them, either deliberately or by accident. You must not ever take a device from a voter, even if they offer it to you. If they are having issues with logins or navigation, please direct them to a voting booth. So, voting. Perhaps the more, most important part of any election. I'll be running through a quick demonstration just so you can see how this works. If you're interested in the intricacies of alternative vote, then please check the additional information provided in the candidates pack. There are two crucial things to remember. This is a tiered voting system. 
So you vote in order of preference, where one equals first choice, two, second choice, etc., etc. This is crucial. Getting second choice votes can sway the entire election. RON is not a person. RON stands for Reopen Nominations. It is just an option if students do not like any of the candidates on offer and want us to rerun the election with a new set of candidates. For the purpose of the demonstration, I've put myself as first choice, our elections mascot Ryan Ribbit as second, Grace as third, Paul as fourth choice, and finally Ron as fifth. So as you can see, we have had 405 votes in total for this election, which means any candidate getting 203 or more votes would automatically win, as this is over half the voting body making up a majority. On the first round of voting, Grace got 95 votes, Paul got 60, Ryan got 122, I got 121, and Ron got 7. As no one has had a majority here, we eliminate the lowest place candidate, Ron, and redistribute their votes. On the second round of voting, Grace still has 95 votes, Paul 60, Ryan 122, and I have now got 123 votes. You may notice only two votes actually different from the first round. This shows that although Ron had seven votes that we redistributed, only two of those seven students actually gave a second choice candidate. However, since a majority still has not been reached, we eliminate the lowest place candidate, this time Paul, and redistribute their votes. Now on to the third round of voting. Grace has 107 votes, Ryan has 133, and I have 127. There is still not an obvious majority, so we eliminate the lowest place candidate again and transfer the votes accordingly. Now into round four. Ryan has 172 votes, and I only have 139. No one has the quota of 203 votes, but it doesn't matter as Ryan has beaten me in a one-to-one. -one. Therefore, Ryan Ribbit has been elected. You can see that after two rounds, I was actually in the lead. However, Ryan campaigned well, got more second and third place votes than I did, so won quite comfortably in the end. Right, now we've dealt with the rules and numbers, let's move on to the more interesting stuff campaigning. If you haven't already, it is definitely time to think about what you want to do for your year in office. If you're short of ideas, you can look into the largest student issues in the country at the moment, or speak to students on campus, your friends or colleagues, to find more local issues that need work. One of the most important things I can tell you at this point is to find three to six points that will really drive you for the upcoming year. You may think it sounds a good idea to pick points that are going to easily get you votes. But if you're elected on those points, you then have to work for them for a year. And if you're not interested in them, it will be very hard and not a productive year for you. Another thing to start thinking about is what your campaign team looks like, if you so want one. Remember that you'll be responsible for them, so pick people that you trust. Finally, try to attend a manifesto session drop-in if you can. These aren't mandatory, but they may give you a steer on how to spruce up your manifesto. So what ideas do you have around campaigning? Let's have a quick think about the coming weeks and what you have planned. Here are some ideas that may help you get started. You could do some lecture shout outs. As long as you have the permission from your lecturer, there is no reason that you couldn't talk to your lecture group to get them to vote for you. Banners are a great idea, as are videos, posters, using social media, t-shirts, stalls, flyers, giveaways, getting a sports society or a community to endorse you. You could even use podcasts, radio, or animations. The most important bit of all campaigning is to be creative. Your campaign needs to offer something different from everyone else's, so you're the person that sticks in the mind of the voters. And the best campaigning method will always be to speak to students. Although it is time consuming, there is no substitute for hard work and simply promoting yourself and your candidacy to students through conversation, getting that human contact, is the best method possible. Posters or flyers are some of the most popular methods of campaigning we see used by students. However, it's quite easy to fade into the background with a rushed or thoughtless poster. It's worth remembering 
There are numerous styles you could go for. And whilst this is the example, this is by no means the best one. So, looking at the example on the screen, remember to use a good photo of yourself. This has to be easily recognisable as you. A head or shoulders profile shot works really nicely here. One thing to avoid at all costs is any group photos or any photos from notes out. It's recommended to have your aims and objectives highlighted in a way that makes them easy to read using titles or little graphics to help break up your manifesto and draw attention to your aims. Keeping it simple is also important. So much text and no one's going to want to read your poster or flyer. No one's going to read an essay as they walk past it. But too little text and you won't be able to get your point across. Finding that key balance is really, really important. You can include a small personal profile. This helps personify you to the reader a little bit, making them more likely to identify with you or feel like they know you slightly better. Be sure to keep to the guidelines we spoke about earlier in the video. And finally, try to stand out. It's hard to make your poster or flyer the one that draws attention in a sea of posters and flyers, but it's the more creative ones that will be most effective. There are also some things to avoid doing. Please don't forget to attach a photo to the poster. Readers will have no idea who you are. Similarly, be sure to use the same name on your poster as appears on the ballot paper. If you have a nickname or are going by a different name to that on your KUSA account, then please notify us so we can change it accordingly. I've spoken uh, on length about this already, but please do try to do something new. I'd love to see new ideas. Please don't just use text. Even I wouldn't read a poster that was just a wall of text, and I love elections. Be sure to mix it up with some graphics, headings, or something interesting to draw the eye. And most importantly, do not ignore the guidelines. We will be taking down posters that are not compliant, and you will not be reimbursed for any items that are removed. Videos and other forms of media are very effective methods of campaigning and will serve you very well if you correctly utilize them on social media and other networks. These videos do not have to be Hollywood quality. We are not expecting a two hour epic about your life and your plans for Kusu, but you can definitely produce something on your budget to help get you some more votes. Videos must contain your manifesto points and cannot be offensive, rude, or targeted towards other candidates. Make sure your video is entertaining. People won't want to view it if it isn't. Sometimes a 20 second video will do more for you than a three minute video. Check out this entertaining take on a manifesto video from a former president of Exeter Guild. You can find the link in the description below the video. There are some campaign materials that can be made on the budget and we can even help you with some. If you want some custom t-shirts, then you can make these with stencils and spray paints using old t-shirts that you may just have lying around. This is much cheaper than buying custom online versions, just be sure to follow the directions on the spray can. Bed sheets are very useful if you want to make a banner on a budget. And of course be sure to reuse as many materials as possible. Think sustainably. Lots of flyers that get handed out often end up in the bin and we want to think as green as possible when it comes to the elections. Having a good strategy towards voting week can really help sway the polls in your favour. Be sure to use your campaign team, if you have one, to help spread the load of that campaigning. You can't be everywhere at once, so it's crucial to have people you trust to speak on your behalf. Throughout your team, it's important that they are delivering the same message. Consistency is key. If one person is saying you want to buy a car for every student, and the other one is saying you want to improve the printing services, then students will be getting very confused. Another thing it is important to be aware of is that there will be different numbers of voting booths per day on each campus. Please check out the elections website for clarification on this. Students will be studying throughout the election, so be aware of that as well. Not every student will be willing to dash straight to a voting booth straight away once you've spoken to them, so please let them come to their own decisions and let them vote in their own time. Finally, as mentioned earlier, voting will be closed overnight allowing you and the voters to get some well-earned rest. We're almost at the end of this video, so let's sum up with some quick do's and don'ts. Some things to avoid are exceeding your budget. It's so obvious when someone has overspent or not declared something, we will pass it onto the DRO if this happens. 
Obviously, do not intimidate other candidates. This election has to be as accessible and welcoming as possible for all involved, and that includes the other candidates. Voting on other students' behalf is a massive no-no. They must vote for themselves. If they try and pass you their mobile device, then you must hand it back and insist they do it. Once you have voted, you should not see the voting screen again for any other reason. IT regulations exist for a reason. Please do not log on to your friends' accounts to vote or breach any of the rules surrounding IT usage. The library, as mentioned earlier, is a no campaigning area. It's a place for study and not campaigning. Finally, be sure to not campaign too close to the voting booths. The areas will be clearly marked by KUSU staff beforehand. Some things that we recommend doing are using slogans and themes to unify your materials. A good slogan or theme will stick in the mind of the voter. Using flyers and posters as campaign materials, just make sure to follow the rules. Use banners if you can, displaying your campaign to as many people as possible. T-shirts are a great idea if you can fit them into your budget. Kitting out your campaign team really helps give your campaign an identity. Videos can be incredibly effective if you, know, if you have the know-how to produce them. Social media is almost a must in modern campaigning. Make sure you use it effectively. As mentioned earlier, campaign teams can really help alleviate some of the responsibility from your shoulders, but pick people you trust. Some of our sports, societies and communities may want to endorse you. However, these groups must have a vote of their committee members prior to the election before they are to endorse any candidates. We will be checking on these as they go out. Any event that is taking by on any campus could provide a really good gathering of students to campaign to. Check out what's coming up in the calendar and you may be able to secure some extra votes. There will be communal spaces for posters to be put up without fear of them being removed. Check the KUSU site for more information on this. Lecture shout outs are allowed, but please check with the lecturer first. And most importantly, speaking to students is still the best method. Remember, students can vote for whoever they want to. Please don't be upset if this isn't you. You can always still campaign to be their second choice vote, and we've seen how effective second choice votes can be. Finally, be creative, stand out, and catch the eye. Thank you for watching this candidate's briefing. Um, make sure you now complete the attach candidate quiz to finish this process. If you do not complete the quiz, you will not be sent the candidate's pack as we have no record that you have completed. If you have any questions, please contact myself or your campus coordinator. Thank you.